let's compute the definite integral from 0 to 2 pi of 1 over 1 plus sine squared t with respect to t using the residue theorem. Now, our precise answer, square root of 2 times pi, it's roughly 4.44. Since our precise answer seems unlikely, let's check it with a Riemann sum. So, we'll sketch the graph of our function, run from 0 to 2 pi. We're going to fill our region in with rectangles. So, we'll use base length equal to 0.01. We'll take the area of each rectangle, and then we'll take the sum. So, I'll do that with my computer. Then, I'll get the Riemann sum equal to roughly 4.44. So square root of 2 times pi is a candidate for the area under the graph of our function. Now, what's our strategy for getting the precise answer? Normally with a line integral, I would take a function on the complex plane that matches our integrand on the real axis. Now you'll note here we're only going from 0 to 2 pi. So for our usual procedure, we normally go from, say, 0 to infinity or minus infinity to infinity. Not happening here, so we'll want to use a different method. So I'm going to try to identify our definite integral as a line integral after we substitute in the parametrization. So the idea is we're going to find some curve C. We'll attach to that curve a ZT over some range. In this case, it'll be from 0 to 2 pi. And then when we work out all the steps, we get out our integral here. Now, to figure out what curve we should use, we'll take a look at Euler's formula for sine. So, that states, if I take sine of t, it's equal to e to the it minus e to the minus it over 2i. So, I want to use z of t equal to e to the it. If I substitute in to sine of t, we're going to get z minus z of the minus 1 over 2i. If we put this into our integrand, we'll be able to sort this out to get a rational function in there in z. Now, if we use this parametrization, the limits on my integral are going from 0 to 2 pi. And we'll need dz. So dz, we're just going to take the derivative here with respect to t. So we get i e to the i t dt. And then note z is equal to e to the i t. So we'll have that dt is equal to dz over i z. So when I sub out dt, everything will be in terms of z. Finally, for our curve, we note this is just a parametrization for one loop around the unit circle going counterclockwise. So that's the curve that we're using. Now, we substitute in. I'll multiply by minus 4z over minus 4z to help simplify the denominator. Then we get minus 4z dz over i times z to the fourth minus 6z squared plus 1. We could apply the residue theorem here, but if I take one extra step, our work will be a little bit easier. So I'm going to let u be equal to z squared. We'll have du equals 2z dz. Then for our curve, for z, we went one loop around the unit circle, so 0 to 2 pi. In u, we're going to go from 0 to 4 pi, so we're doing two loops around the unit circle counterclockwise. For the integral, we'll just do one loop around the circle, but multiply by 2. We substitute. If I want to simplify, I can move the i from the denominator to the numerator as a minus i. So I we'll have 4i times this line integral here. Now I want to apply the residue theorem. To do that, we have to find which poles are inside the unit circle. So, factor the denominator. I get, using the quadratic equation, u equals 3 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 2. So we have two roots, 
first root, 3 minus 2 squared of 2, so roughly 0.2. So that's inside the unit circle on the real axis. For R2, 3 plus 2 times squared of 2, it's roughly 5.8. So that's outside the unit circle, and we won't need to check that pole. Let's compute the residue of our integrand at R1. So, take the denominator, we factor, becomes u minus r1, u minus r2. We have a simple pole, so to get the residue, I just multiply by u minus r1. Then we take the limit as u goes to r1, which is the same as evaluation. So we have 1 over r1 minus r2. That simplifies to minus 1 over 4 times square root of 2. Now we can invoke the residue theorem. So we have 4i times our line integral. It's equal to 4i times 2 pi i times the sum of the residues at the poles in our region. So we have 4i times 2 pi i times minus 1 over 4 square root of 2. And that simplifies to square root of 2 times pi as promised.